Hello, you're watching Alf New X, and today let's talk about the just finished air in Chinese web drama Man Chang de Jijie, The Long Season. This is a 12 episode short drama that's produced by Tencent, also airing on Tencent. It is directed by Xin Shuo, whose previous best known work in Chinese drama land is the super successful In Mi de Jiao Luo, The Bad Kids from Ai Qi Yi. It is written by Yu Xiaotian, who is the original story creator and the main writer, then two other scriptwriters, Pan Yiran and Chen Ji. This drama is led by Fan Wei, Qin Hao, Chen Ming Hao, Liu Yitie, Li Gengxi, Jiang Qiming, also featuring some guest starring actors who don't have that much screen time but are very familiar to anybody who's watched the bad kids, such as Liu Ling and Shi Peng Yuan. And it happens to be another drama that I find really hard to give a final score. I can round it up to two gold mine, but it's not a normal two gold mine. Certain aspects of this drama, easily it's a three gold mine work. Then there are certain things about this drama that I'm very not satisfied about. As usual, let me first introduce the story to you, then we'll talk about why I have such a mixed feeling about this drama. This is a story that has two timelines about 20 years apart going on at the same time. One is set in 1998, the other is 2016. And it's focused on three main male characters played by Fan Wei, Qin Hao, Chen Ming Hao. It's set in a northeastern small city that is based on heavy industry, in this drama's case, steel mill. In China's 1990s, a lot of national such big industries went through a huge change. You will see that in Feng Chui Ban Xia last year and many other recent dramas. So this is yet another set in that period of time drama. The roles Fan Wei and Qin Hao play all work at this steel mill, one as the train driver, the other as an office administrator. Then Chen Ming Hao's role in the 1998 timeline is a local policeman. These three men all get involved in the investigation of a murder case that happened on the precinct of this steel mill, a female body that got found and dismembered and can't get quite identified. And particularly Fan Wei, this role, his personal life gets also heavily and seriously affected by this case. As the story goes on, you'll find out what, and I'm not going to spoil it for you here. This case didn't get broken at the time when it happened. Thus, we get our second timeline in 2016, when some kind of clue resurfaces and Fan Wei's role led the trio, the three old men now, to go back to their own investigation of the case that didn't get broken earlier. So along this investigation happening at two different timelines, you see the societal change and it contains a lot of that contrast between past and current time. Now, let's get into the details. First, the good things. The things that definitely makes this drama very high quality, very worth watching, and even though I have things I don't like about it, I still highly recommend you at least try it out a little bit, see if it's your cup of tea. First point, short drama, high quality, just like the bad kids. You just cannot pick at anything that is not well done in this drama. It is Xin Shuang's style and Xin Shuang's standard. If you want to compare this drama to The Bad Kids, I'd say this drama is less of a typical thriller crime drama, more of a showing the details of life and character-driven drama. Therefore, it's not so heavy and so stylistic on the crime drama style thing as The Bad Kids. They picked autumn or fall season for the story to happen in the northeastern town. Because in one interview, this director said usually Dongbei, northeastern China, gets represented on screen with this cold quality because it's snow covered, it's just like Winnipeg, and then it has heavy industry. They don't want to do that anymore. They want to make a warm Dongbei. So even the color grading of this drama is mostly on the warm side of things. If you're a very picky drama watcher, you just want to look at the best of the best production quality. Then this one probably comes to the top one or two this year so far from Chinese drama land. Also, because Tencent did this drama and they started to do Dolby Vision drama, this year. The first one was Three Body. If you do have devices that are up to date enough and you watch it from Tencent's Chinese, at least version official site, the highest level you can pick is Dolby Vision and it does make a difference. I don't have a huge screen that can play Dolby Vision, but I do have a, an iPad that's 
up to date enough to be able to play it, and I can see a huge difference between the 4K and the Dolby Vision one in terms of the contrast, the sharpness, the definition, and the color richness. Also, this director, because he used to be a musician, he is the guitar player of a band called Joyside, and they still use their music in dramas everywhere. So he is very sensitive about sound, sound design, music. You see that in the Bad Kids already. He does music in a very different way compared to pretty much every other director in Chinese drama, land. and he continues doing that in this drama. If you are a very sensitive person to sound and music design, you will highly appreciate this drama. Second great thing about this drama, for sure, is acting and the cast. You have mainly two generations of actors. One is the older people that consists of Fan Wei, Qing Hao, Chen Ming Hao, Liu Ling. One very cool thing about this drama is because it has 20 years apart timeline. So these older actors do each of them get an aged makeup design in the 2016 timeline. Either fatten them, change their skin texture, change the wrinkle, hairline. That's another really interesting thing that doesn't happen that much in Chinese drama land. But in terms of the acting, right, the older actors, they're, they're just way too good to need any further you know, compliment from Avenue X. Particularly, I'd say Fan Wei is known in China best as the comedy on stage actor because he was collaborating with Zhao Benshan for years during Chinese Spring Festival variety show. If you really have to rank the calibers of Chinese actor of his age range, he would definitely end up in the top five list type of national treasure actor. And there would be so many golden moments he delivers in this drama that will definitely make every human watching this drama get what a good actor can do. Then for the younger actors, Li Gengxi, Liu Yitie, Jiang Qiming, they also did a great job. In my opinion, with the people I've seen their previous works, this is the best acting they've delivered so far. And with Jiang Qiming, the actor who I didn't know this before, I see a huge potential and I see a huge future star in the type of being a proper serious and maybe doing more indie movie type of acting than commercial and mainstream acting actor. This young guy is so good. The third great thing about this drama is it is a drama with its own style. I kind of already said that in the first point, but here to just elaborate on that furthermore, because this director is a very talented director. He has a very well-developed taste in audio and video representation on screen. You'll see a lot of well-designed transitions and then with editing and with music, and it pulls the timeline very easily into each other, coupled with the really well-timed acting and often a lot of very well-written details of each scene. In terms of the dialogues spoken, the characters' details of action, expression, it's just a really refined drama that is like a person with strong personality or a particular type of perfume that is done by a very artistic designer that is not like most of the commercial you know, perfume you buy in Sephora. The drama feels like that. So it's another reason for you to at least go and check it out. Now I've said all the great things, seemingly that it should be a three gold mine, right? And why do I find it so hard to actually give it a final evened out score that makes sense? Well, it mostly comes from my genuine watching experience. I watch this drama every day as it updates. What I realized about this drama is around the point eight or nine, I start to suddenly lose interest or not really care about what's gonna happen. And also, as that was happening, another drama caught my attention. And I find watching that drama and this drama creates such a strong contrast of experience. Experience. The oh no, here comes trouble. For the long season, it is a drama that I've watched through 12 episodes. I don't feel I've wasted my time, but I will never go back to rewatch it. And for the drama, no, here comes trouble. I've already watched it three times, the first eight episodes. So I've watched 24 episodes already. And I probably will go back and rewatch it again at some time because it is a drama that is possible for you to rewatch and re enjoy. Whereas long season is like good for the first time and that's it done. I think there are a couple of reasons why this is happening to me. First point, I feel this drama made a mistake picking a crime story as the main motivation and drive for the thing to happen. And why I feel this drama is so much less enjoyable than The Bad Kids, although production quality wise they're on par, is The Bad Kids is a pure classic crime thriller drama. It is 
people finding out other people's secret and these two groups of people combating from day one, first moment that this is such a story and it carries it to the end. It's a tagline drama, write one line and everybody kind of already see what it it's likely to be. Where's the long season? If you say you can write it down in one sentence, the tagline of this drama, what it is, it's very hard to do that. Because although it has this murder case as the drive of the 98 and 2016 timeline, it is so not the main point of the story. Most of the time you're seeing these three men in their two timelines, details of life. Everything you can think of, their career, their private romantic relationship, their relationship with their kids or other people, bureaucracy, working place, and the drama actually really wants to tell that part. Even in interviews, the director said that he just wants to make a story set in northeastern heavy industry town in autumn of old men in their years of decay and losing all the capabilities and glories they've had in their youth, but still trying to struggle on and face life with that typical Dongbei people's attitude. If you just want to do that type of story, why do you have to have the murder case as the through line to carry this otherwise actually talking about life detail story? And also because you do have such a gruesome case happening from audience's perspective, what do we want to know most? Is it we want to know all the life contrast details of two decades apart of three men? Or do we actually really want to find out who killed who? I think the second one, the actual case, makes we want to watch this drama. As it goes on, you feel you get kind of cheated and lied to and pulled in this story with a hook, which is the case. But then everything you see is the three old men's life story. By episode 8 and 9, I really, really lost patience. And when by episode 10, they kind of showed you at least a milestone of what really happened back in 1998. You're really hungry, you want to eat something, but then you waited too long. And by the point the food comes, you no longer have the appetite. Waited too long and they just never give me the payoff I want to know. So by the time things actually happen, I'm already like, Fine, whatever. It's almost like the director Xin Shuang, because he was so well known for The Bad Kids, which is a crime story, that somehow if he does another great work, it has to be in this genre. Maybe it's the investor Tencent decides, you know, like do this project with us and we want another crime drama, just like Ai Qi did in Mi Wu Chang. I don't know if that's why it has this weird, jarring, separate, quality of you have one story of three old men's life story and one story of the crime. Then the second thing about this story is it tries to do too much. Because it's talking about the three men's life and the 1908 and 2016 timeline difference, all the things that have happened in their life, it's just too filled with details. It looks at every aspect of their life and you don't even know like what is the emphasis, what is the core, what is the most important thing you want to tell. Here I just give you a little bit spoiler so if you don't want to hear about it, jump to this. For the Rao Qinghao place, his acting is impeccable, his role is interesting, and you do love his character. But oh my god, how many things have happened to this character? Early days of his romantic relationship, we'll see how he tried to charm the girl and they marry. But actually the nurse has this relationship with the factory leader and he is the guy who knows actually she has a relationship with that guy and she's pregnant and she kind of like got involved with him because she wants to find her kids father but the kid didn't get born and they had this marriage for 20 years and it breaks at the end and they divorce but then they still love each other and he dies in this accident well, on the day he gets the lottery ticket winning come on stop slow down you have just too much things going on do you have to pile up that much dramatic things on one character to impress your audiences every step it gets to the point where you're like okay it's too much <laughs> it's too much i don't believe it almost after I've watched the whole story today, as I'm sitting down making this video, I just watched episode 12 and I get this strong, strong feeling that they made a huge mistake of not making this drama an absolute definitive one male lead story. They should have written this story completely circling around Fan Wei's role. This white haired taxi driver who looks so weak, but who is actually super intelligent and a very complicated person. His life experience in the story setting is just like great Oscar winning performance material and he delivered great performances, but there should be more. This shouldn't be a three man trail story plus a lot of other peripheral roles who all just spread out the story's energy, takes so much screen time away. It tries to set up so many characters within a 12 episode span, which is very limited time. You have 
on screen. It should have been cut down, cut down so many places so that you have definitive one male lead. And he should be the center of the narrative. He should be the center of everything. Everything should be just happening around him because this actor is so good he will be able to deliver all those pillar performances you want. And if you just lean all the energy on him, it would be that one old man story. Just by imagining it, I think it would be a much sexier story. Those are pretty much everything I want to say about this rather interesting drama in the long season. I would still say it's a highly, highly recommendable drama to most of the viewers. At least you should venture into it to have a taste of it and see if it's your thing. But then I would warn you that in terms of case breaking, finding out all the details about the murder that this drama has, the pacing, the deliver, the payoff, the timing of things may not satisfy most drama watchers who like crime stories. That is my final opinion on this drama, Man Kang de Ji Jie, the long season. Hope that's useful for you to decide whether you should check out this drama. Thank you for watching. I'm New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.